We met in Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I was teaching school and Dick was flying airplanes mm -hmm. for the Air Force and he moved in next door to my two roommates. I just remember that you called me on the phone instead of knocking on the door, which was just around the corner. <laughs> you called on the phone. Well, I thought that was the best way to get a queen. Well, you said if I turned you down, it wouldn't be as embarrassing. <laughs> I was impressed. I like men in uniform, mm -hmm. and that was impressive. I think we both saw something in each other that we hadn't seen in, in other situations, mm -hmm. and we met in uh, something like November. And we decided by January that uh, this was going to stick. Where did you get married? In Roebuck, South Carolina, at the Roebuck Baptist Church, where my where I had been brought up, and my grandparents and. My parents were all there. It hailed <laughs> in April in South Carolina on the day we'd get married, and we rode by the church, and the steps were covered up with hail. I felt confident um, in that I was making the right decision, and that that this was going to work. The day after the wedding it was the first day that they had opened the. Uh, Chair. The chairlift up to the top of the highest mountain in that city. It's still there operating and we were one of the first people to go up so oh. we kind of, it was something new. Yeah. And, you know, people began to see that we were newlyweds because of the way we reacted mm -hmm. I guess. So we had a lot of people say congratulations and things like that mm -hmm. which was nice. Do you remember the first time you argued? No I don't because in our whole life we never had many arguments. Mm -hmm. Very, very seldom. That's more credit to him, though, because I'm, I would be more apt to argue than he would. He would just get quiet. Mm -hmm. Or you would say, no comment. <laughs> no comment. NC. <laughs> NC, he would say, and that would make me furious. Rick was born on our 10th tenth, tenth month anniversary, mm -hmm. which was making my grandmother really nervous. We didn't know how to prepare for one. Uh, we both had no experience in that. and. We, we woke him up 17 times the first night we had him home to change his wet diaper. It was kind of rough the first few months because we didn't know what we were doing. And you were gone a lot. And I was gone a lot, but uh, we, we just grew into it, really. And it made us closer. From Charleston, uh, we moved to Texas A&M mm -hmm. and were there two years while uh, Dick got his master's degree from a and &E. uh, I spent a lot of time crushing rocks as a part of my civil engineering degree. And, and, you know, kind of boring, but we got to the degree and that's all I needed. Yeah. yeah. So we spent two years there, I think. And yeah. We, yeah. we love Texas. And Your dad and I flew to Germany oh. and Rick was so mad at me that he sat with his back to me about halfway to Germany because he didn't want to leave his grandparents. So our weekends were off and we had good vacations and we uh, we spent the long vacations going to Holland and Sweden and all those places in there. And so we, we had tons of fun doing that. So how did you both handle being apart so much? People ask me later, didn't you worry about him flying in Vietnam and in and out of Vietnam? And we had a really strong friend and the pastor of the church, and he promised, he said, I can't do a whole lot for your husband while he's in Vietnam, but I promised to pray for him. I knew that, that he was doing that, and I was doing that, and so. His handwritten letters, there was no other way, and no communication whatsoever. So I wrote often and she would answer back, but it took uh, five to seven days to get a letter. And we had waited 10 years for the second child that we had wanted for, you know, all that time. And Rick was excited. And when we brought John home from the hospital, Rick said, let me carry him inside. So he carried John inside the first first time John came home and as our family grew, I think we grew closer together. But how did you feel when you found out that you were going to be grandparents? Surprise. Well, yeah. Your mom called and said, 
sit, sit down, Mary Shane. I have something to tell you, sit down. I mean, we were delighted, and when we found out it was twin girls, we were extra delighted because we had two boys. And, and the, the other two uh, children, you know, your, your brother and sister came along, and then, so it's, it's been a delight for us. 20 years later, we get another grandchild, and so that we just got an extra blessing. Yeah. And we're waiting to be great-grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just thinking back on 60 years of marriage, what were some of the best times? Um, truthfully, the best times have never ended. They're still going on. Mm -hmm. you know, we, just, we just find that we know each other so very well. Yeah, we haven't had any really bad times. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a good 60 years and we, uh, the love that we had for each other has grown and matured and we, and we have tried to put God first in our marriage and, and then our family. So we're equal partners, I would say. What advice do you have for young couples who are just getting started? I think you have to really know the meaning of trust. You have to trust that person. Mm -hmm. Since you're going to live together for 60 years, <laughs> you might as well have some fun along the way. So I think you have, you have to have some fun. Choose your mate carefully. Make sure that, uh, that you know the person. And then once you make the commitment, you make it before God and before your family, and you keep your commitment.